Andrew Banster here alongside Tony Thomas as we revisit what was made in history a little bit over a month ago. Today is just a little bit past August 13th, but a couple of days ago was the anniversary, the one month anniversary of Tony stealing first base for the first time in baseball history. So we wanted to revisit with Tony, see how his life's changed and try to answer some questions that have been, you know, maybe going around, whether it be questions for you or questions about what the play you know what what happened during the play so first off let's start off with take us through that play um what happened on that day um i mean i think it was like the sixth or seventh inning we were down by one they had a good guy on the mound he um, had a good off-speed pitch and i need to find a way to get on base and he actually first pitch was a borderline strike and they called it a strike so i was down 0-1 and the next pitch he hooked the slider and just went all the way to the backstop and then as I look back there, we have a little space in between pads and the, and the ground, and it just literally lodged neat there. And all of a sudden, everybody in the dugout yelling, run, run, run. I'm like, oh, I can run. I forgot about this. So I took off, ran to first base, and I was like, did I really get still first base? Like, is, that's happening right now? And then, But then in the course of the game, didn't really worry about it too much. Ended up scoring that run. We ended up rallying four more runs that inning. Ended up winning the ball game. So when we talk about that, I mean, a lot of the times – People wonder, I think one of the questions has been, how is your first reaction? And it doesn't sound like it was your first reaction, but people wonder, you've been playing baseball your whole life, obviously, and you've never had the chance to steal first. Did it even cross your mind when it passed the backstop in the first place? Uh, absolutely not. I mean, half this stuff is just all being in a competitive atmosphere, just trying to play, find a ways to win. Um, it's not I go into the plate thinking, hey, this is how I'm trying to steal first base. I didn't want to think that was my opportunity. Uh, I just looked at the situation. I got my job to get to first base and present myself, so I did not take off. So when the rule initially came out, just to a lot of the questions as well have been about how it was scored. Talk about how it used to be scored and how it's been changed to now be scored. Yeah, um, originally it was a 0-1, 0-1 like a fielder's choice. So it went against my batting average, and then everybody was like, well, I don't want to wear that 0-1. I don't want to make my batting average drop because of a crazy rule. But I looked at it as, like, again, that situation, that ended up helping us win the ball game. So now if we make the playoffs by one run, or by one game, it's because of that play, you could say almost. So in the course of the season, I have 500 at-bats. One at-bat's not going to change my average dramatically. Now, if I was to do it 10 times for 0 for 1s, that's different. But again, the situation has to be perfect. Um, but now it's a, considered a walk. So it helps your own base percentages, I think, because the people had a lot of opportunities presenting present themselves, and everybody in the league wasn't trying to do it. And so I think they changed it so that way you could benefit out of the rule. So what, I guess, obviously you were, you were open-minded enough to go try it, but obviously not everybody is considering that it's not happening, you know, even once a game sometimes. So what are other people's reactions, you know, I guess without getting too specific, obviously, is it typically, are people all for it? Are people maybe a little indifferent about it or, you know, and how do you sit now, considering the fact that I don't believe, I think we talked about it, you said you had not stole first base since, is that right? Right. So what is kind of the reaction around the league about this rule in particular? And are people more comfortable with it or not as willing to do it? Uh, I, I, just like with anything, when change happens, everybody's against it right away. Um, it's just opportunity has to present itself. Like there's been plenty of chances where guys could have stole first base, but they didn't. Um, we've had two guys, other two guys on our team, I think Eddie Garcia did it and Josh McAdams did it as well. But those situations were crucial times we needed a base runner and they're all late inning parts of the game. So I think you have to put that in the fact that it's not guys are going up there looking to steal first base. They're looking, okay, what's my way to get on base? Just like when we were in college, they, if the guys throw you inside fastball, you, if you lean into it, you find a way to get on first base. The guys are a little bit harder now, so I'm not leaning into many fastballs. <laughs> but, but the situation has to present itself in the right time. almost has to be like a perfect storm. Guys aren't going up there to look for bad pitches to steal first base because our ultimate goal is to get to the big leagues and you're not going to get scouted if you just keep running still in first base. So so that was another question of mine. And then obviously, you know, your goal and basically everybody in this league's goal is to get to the big leagues. And you mentioned it a little bit, but, um, you know, right now it goes down as a walk and it used to go down as a fielder's choice, which would hurt your average. Do you think right off the bat people are thinking to themselves, you know, I'm not going to do this because – the whole goal of being here is to get to the next level. And if it's taking me back from being at the next level, why would I do it? And furthermore, um, you know, you talked about the fact that 
you were just trying to help your team win a game, which is, I think, says a lot about you and says a lot about what this clubhouse is like. But, you know, and this is just an assumption, but there may be some people that may be more interested in their own stats than they would in their team winning the game. And maybe that's jumping to some conclusions. But, um, you know, I guess it's more of just a counterpoint. Going away from that, some people say that stuff like this and a lot of the initial reaction to the initial tweet of the video of you doing it said that this is ruining the game of baseball you know people were saying mentioning the major league baseball commissioner by name and then say why are you doing this why are you allowing this to happen i don't want to see this at the mlb level and we'll get to the positive stuff just in a moment but what are your initial reactions to people saying that this is ruining the game of baseball and furthermore what did you take of the criticism? Although maybe not directed right at you, you were of course the person that did it. How did you take the criticism? Um, I mean, just growing up my whole life, and anything with sports, you're gonna get criticized. There's always a team that's for you and a team that's against you. So I was lucky enough when I went to Florida State, like we had guys sit us down and, and not worry about media stuff coming in, only be only worry about things you can't control. So I, I obviously looked at some of this stuff and honestly could just laugh at it just because it's, like, it's just like anything. Like I said earlier, when, when there's a rule change, everybody's like, oh, no, this is bad. Like back in the day, there wasn't a three-point line. Now look at it. Now they're trying to push a three-point line farther back. So nobody's saying, nobody was saying anything about it then, but when it happened, they're like, oh, this is going to ruin the game. But now it's there's a three-point contest because of this. So I'm not saying there's going to be a st stolen first base contest, <laughs> but I mean, it's it would everything if, if something is stays the same you're gonna lose interest in it so you got to think this is also it's 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 an entertainment um, aspect as well it, we, I mean it's a beautiful baseball game that's why I play it I have so much passion for it and and being part of this change is almost like being a pioneer of it as well I can't control what rules they make I just got to play the game and my job and what makes me the player I am I try to play this game as hard as I can every every single day so then when we get a little bit more on a positive note People like ESPN's Clinton Yates came down to a Blue Crabs game and talked about you during his, you know, on-air ESPN broadcast. We've had all different types of media outlets talking about you or being here. What has that been like, first of all? And then additionally, how has it felt with all the positivity coming out of it and you being the person that, like you said, pioneered this whole thing? Right. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an experience. That's one thing for sure. I mean, it's made this summer a lot more fun it, I mean everything's going and it's just it's just contagious so like all this positive feedback coming from it is I, I'm not saying it's the reason why but our team's kind of turned it around especially from the first half and now we're in this playoff race and so we're just trying to take all this positive energy and put it onto this field and, and play this game as hard as we can so when we talk about that positive energy and it feeding in we talk about in particular the day that your cleats and if you weren't familiar Tony Thomas's cleats the MLB, excuse me, the National Hall of Fame and Baseball Museum specifically requested that Tony donate his New Balance cleats to Cooperstown. He did so, and he went four for four with a pair of RBIs and a pair of doubles that day. I mean, what a perfect day, right? Talk us through that day. I mean, it was, so my family comes and visit me once a year, uh, no matter what I'm playing the season. And it just happened to be that weekend that they were here in town. And they called National Hall of Fame, one of my cleats. It was just like this perfect storm. And then that game, they ended up going four for four with like two doubles. It was like unbelievable. So, yeah. I'm, so I'm a big firm believer that whatever you put out into the universe is going to give it back. So I, I try to take everything in a positive aspect, try to enjoy life, whatever presents itself to me, and just have fun. So obviously there was no assumption coming into this season that you were going to become this national phenomenon. But in some ways, has it played in – to you know not only just kind of your everyday life outside of the game of baseball and then you know in addition to that past the four for four day you've been extremely successful in the second half you haven't stolen first base but you're among the top 10 in the league in steals in general and your batting average in the second half is above 300 you had home runs in back-to-back -back days a couple of days ago it seems like everything's going right is that how you feel yeah, I mean, I mean, stuff like that, especially in this game, baseball. It's, it's you have to, you have to have a little bit of luck to be good, and you have to be confident with yourself. And when you have a lot of positive things going on, it's, it's kind of hard to be down. So I like to just ride the wave and enjoy everything for what the world is already offering me, and, and take each day, day by day. So talk to me about how has your life changed since July thirteenth, twenty nineteen. I mean, 
realistically, I'm, it's the same. Nothing really has changed that much. It's just maybe I got a lot more followers on social media <laughs> stuff. Um, and then the interviews keep happening, which is fine because, I mean, it's new to everybody. So it's not just new to me. It's, it's good to, just because that's how you learn stuff, by asking questions and, and get experiences and stuff like this. And who knows, maybe 10 years from now, this might be in Major League Baseball or it might not even be in a role next year. You never know. So, I mean, just taking it day by day and enjoying it for what it has offered me. So, what has the reaction been like within the clubhouse in terms of, you know, obviously, you know, once a week at least, it seems like, every day that a reporter's coming in wanting to talk to you. Obviously, the team's playing better, but has the reaction, what has it been like from the rest of the clubhouse? I mean, the... This one thing I will say about this team, our, our clubhouse chemistry is unreal. It's like a bunch of big brothers in there, we're all big family. And just like uh, anybody in your family, you, you tease and make fun of them. So if a reporter comes, even if it wasn't even for me, if a reporter comes in for like somebody else who had like a great week, like when Daryl won Pitcher of the Month, a couple reporters came in and they're like, no, Daryl, they're not here to see you, they're here to see Tony from the Hall of Fame. And but this nicks knacks like that, but I mean, it's fine. It makes, makes you excited to come to the field every day. And, and so if, maybe if something like that had to happen to get this team going in the right direction, which I think it is going right now, I'm happy for it. So talk about having your cleats in the Hall of Fame. What's, what's that like? Uh, yeah, it's still surreal yet. I, I don't believe it. Uh, I mean, they gave me a pass to go up there whenever I want. I'm definitely going to try to take a trip up there just, just to see it. And once I see it in there, then I'm like, wow, this really happened. I mean, I, growing up, I always I wanted to be the best baseball player ever. I wanted to be in the Hall of Fame. And I am, but I never thought it would be because of stealing first base. So, and I, I think we talked about this, and I think I'm assuming somebody told you, but if not, I want to let you know that they announced that they would do a little ceremony for you when you do go up there. So, yeah. are you going to take them up on that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, it's, if you're going to do it, you got to do it right. So oh, yeah. I'm going to definitely and, and try to get my family, get some friends up there, and enjoy for what it has to offer me. So, I guess there's one more question about that before we move on to another thing. What was it like? Obviously, not a whole lot of people can say that they became a social media trend, which is a huge thing in today's society. What was it like seeing a video of you everywhere? Well, I mean, it's it's crazy because like, I'll go to sleep and I'll wake up to text messages from people I haven't heard of in years. Like, I saw you on PTI or I saw you on SportsCenter. And I'm, at the time, I'm like, for what? Playing in Southern Maryland? What, what, you, what am I doing on PTI? And right. I guess like, for that first week, it didn't really hit me of like, like what I really did. And then, uh, I mean, just seeing it everywhere. I mean, at one point, I, I thought it was like really cool. It was pretty cool. I'm, I'm big on social media and stuff like that. And, and it's fun. It's, it's a fun, it's a good experience and I'm happy to be a part of it. And before we go on, I gotta make sure everybody go give Tony a follow on social media, of course. Yeah, uh, Instagram, Tony underscore T23. You gotta give him a follow. I was telling him right before this interview, actually, that his social media stuff's incredible. I could, I could definitely learn a thing or two from him. Um, Let's move a little bit into some questions that people have had about specifically how this play is scored and so on and so on. So one of the really, really big questions was just how is it scored in general? And I think we did cover that a little bit. Yeah, right now it's, it's an 0 for 0. They consider it as a walk. So your on-base percentage will go up. Uh, the league saw that people weren't taking advantage of the rules, so they try to make it uh, make, make an incentive of it to get on base. Um, so that, that's one thing that's positive about it. So another huge question was, does it count as an at-bat? And Tony just answered yeah, that. No, not right now, no. Um, let's see. One of the really big questions was, and actually, this one I didn't even think about, but people would ask, can you get in a rundown? You know, do you have to go to first? And I believe they said that it's a force. Yeah, so that's what we were thinking the same thing. Like, because certain fields in this league is kind of a cement wall, so the ball bounced back pretty hard. And got even we have the padded wall, but couple of nights ago like balls were jumping back off so if a guy takes off he has he's committed his route to first base and it's just a force he doesn't have to put a tag on him so once you go you can't come back so talk to us a little bit about that how does like when have has an umpire decided yes he has gone and if they, they told us it's the umpire's discretion because like it happened to us last night we were talking about like an inside fastball came and the guy lost his footing and backed up and it took like three four steps just to regain himself but it was in the direction towards first base because he ran a hitter on a pass ball. And then our catcher, Charlie Lario, he's, he's an awesome guy. He likes to make fun all the time. Went and tagged the guy. And the umpire's like, what are you doing? He's like, well, he took three steps out the box. Isn't that the rule? And the umpire's like, no, he's just trying to gather his feet and get out the way. 
So in addition to that, we see with all of these rules and some of the reason that it is here and not going straight to the major league level is to get some of these kinks out. So we saw another really interesting play last night that we were talking about right before we started and got on air. Talk to us a little bit about that play. Yeah, we had a, it was first and, first and second. I think there was one, one out and it was a strike three call or a strike three pass ball swing and miss. So with, as baseball was, if there's a first base is occupied, on a strike three, you can't advance to first base. Um, with the stolen base rule, if first base is occupied and it's a pass ball and the runner wants to go, then it's a forced play at any of the base that they want to throw it to. So in that situation, it was a strike three that came involved. So first base is occupied on a strike three. So the runners, because the runner stays still, Charlie grabbed it, tagged the ball, and threw it to me. He's like, hey, we got a double play right there out of it. But once the strike three happens, it's just considered a regular pass ball. Right. So. Talk to us before we do a little bit more scoring stuff and then wrap up. I mentioned another thing right before we got in the interview that I was I think people would love to know is that where do you decide if you're going to steal first base the next time out? And does it have to be? Because it's my understanding the ball was kind of wedged under the backstop, is what yeah. you told me. Is that right? Yeah, I, I yeah, um I'm like when I get in the batter's box, the probably the last thing on my mind is <laughs> I'm trying to steal first base. Right. My job when I get in the batter's box is to dig in and compete against that pitch and try to hit the ball as hard as I can, um, and try to find a way to advance depending on situations where my team can get the win. Uh, when that, like I said, when it happened, when it's a pass ball, still even if it's a pass ball, I because I'm tracking the pitch all the way to the back. Then I probably, if I was still again, I would see where it bounces before I would go. I wouldn't say, oh, pass ball, and start to take off running. It would have to be pass ball, okay, recognize ball, oh, it's back there, okay, then I'll go, if the opportunity presented itself again. And I, I wondered, I always wondered if, if some of the intrigue of the clip, to me at least, of you stealing first base was because you're in there, the ball passes, you stand there for a second, look back, and then go. There's a little bit of a yeah. pause. Is that kind of what that was all about? Oh, 100%. Uh, like I said, because I looked back and I saw it stuck, and honestly, if my dugout wasn't yelling at me to run. <laughs> And they were probably yelling me to run because we were we were talking about it literally before the game because that was the first day I think the rule was instated. They're like, I'm never going to go, never going to go. You said that? Yeah, I was one of the guys like, I'll never go. But I said in the heat of the moment, in the competition, my, I'm trying to win regardless of what it takes. So have you have you cooled around to it a little bit since then? Yeah. Obviously, you haven't done it since, but are you still as, and obviously you were inclined enough to actually steal first base, but... Are you still as dead set in that I'd rather not do that again, or you know, it, have you it, warmed up to it? No, I mean, I'm not saying I would never do it again. Like I said, the, the opportunity has to be at the right time, perfect storm. But like I said, like, I got, I'm every RB, every situation, the RBI situation, I'm batting, even if nobody's on base, because I have the opportunity to hit the ball out the park. So, I mean, depending on the game, if we need base runners, then that's different. But if if we need guys just because we got to start a rally, then I'll probably stay and try to hit. So just a couple more things. We've got two more questions. One of them, do you actually get a stolen base? And I believe the answer is no. No, no. I because I thought the same thing too. And like the very next day, I'm like, yeah, stolen base. Let's check this <laughs> stuff. And now I went to stand. I'm like, our manager, like, I thought I get stolen base. And like, nah. It's, at that time, it's like it's just a field of choice. So I'm like, well, that kind of sucks a little bit, but right. because this call stolen first base, but no, there's not. You're not actually stealing. It doesn't count as stolen base. And there's no way that that has inspired you to steal all these bases. I mean, you stole two in one time yeah, on the base yeah, last I night. Mean, uh, I mean, that's with some of the rule change. Like now, like guys have to step off the mound completely to pick over. So a lot of guys that have quick feet with jump throws, it eliminates that. So even though you're slide stepping, like my window is is one three. If you're below, if you're above one three, I can steal that bag because unless the catcher has a cannon, I'm going to get there within three seconds. So. Now that wit, you can't do the flip, I can get an extra step in my lead, so now I'm getting there even quicker. So, and then it also goes like, okay, I know you can't get me out and all this stuff, the confident plays in, and it helps out as well. So, and just to confirm, there is no spin, like obviously you can't lift and throw, but there's no spin move either. No, you have to the, the spin moves completely out, and then even when you're on second base, the inside move is out. So anytime a pitcher picks, as soon as that pitcher picks his front leg up, he's commit, he has to commit to home plate. If he does anything deviant to go home plate, it's considered a ball. So getting outside of stealing first base, how do you feel about these rule changes as a whole? How do you think they've panned out over the course of the season, the second half in particular? I mean, like that that one right there, it's it, it's definitely affecting the game. I think stealing numbers will go up tremendously. Um, there's a few rules that I like. Uh, the no mound business, I like it. I think, one, it has sped up the game. 
but two, it forces the pitcher to really lock in and, and, and focus on what he needs to do and, and battle and compete up there. And obviously, many people wondering about the electronic strike zone, the automated ball strike system. Many people speculate about it, but you're one of the few people that have been, you know, fortunate enough to have actually batted with an automated ball strike system, electronic strike zone. What's it like? Do you notice anything? Um, yeah, it sometimes can be a little inaccurate. Uh, on the corners, out and in, it's spot on. I don't think I've had anything called on me personally on the outsides, but low and highs is different because throughout the course of years, everybody's batting stance changed a little bit. So you think they're going off of what I type in as my height, right. but I crouch my knees a little bit. Sometimes I get a little bit lower in my legs. So my top of the zone, instead of it being right right here, it's like up here when I cross down. Yeah. So there's been a lot of guys on our team that have low batting stance that get the high strike caught on them a lot. And it's it's tough. You got a guy throwing 95 and he throws it just above your shoulders and you're getting caught strike on it's kind of hard to hit. So would you ever think to adjust your batting stance because of that or no? No, I think uh, if they want, if they really want this to be accurate, they should have guys come in, tell us getting our batting stance and calibrate it off our stance. Right. And then knowing that they calibrate off this stance mm -hmm. is going to force me to work on this stance throughout the whole entire season. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. Um, and the only very last thing that we would ask is, you know, of course, we're talking about the Blue Crabs doing much better this season. Talk us through what has been going on in the second half and how is everything going? Yeah, I mean, we're two games out right now from first place. Everything's going really well for us. Um, our hitting has become has become unreal right now. We're averaging, I think, like six, seven, eight runs a game. Um, defense has been phenomenal. And our pitch, our back end bullpen is, is unbelievable with, with Matt Latos and Andrew and uh, Chop and and Dykstra, them guys have been going out and, and throwing the mess out of the ball right now. So before we send off, Tony, any last words? Nope. Uh, I mean, just if you guys are in the, in the Maryland area, would like to come out, uh, watch our games. Um, we're playing some good baseball right now, and, and it, it, you do a lot better when you have uh, fan support and stands as well. We'd love to have you out. Visit SOMBBlueCrabs.com to purchase your ticket. Tony, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Andrew.